start by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Almighty Heavenly Father in Hebrew, in the name of His only begotten Son, which is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit. That's the Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing us His truth. Honors to the brothers who's pushing His truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. And also honors to the hopeful relay, the one-third of our people who's returned back to the Lord during these final moments in America so that he will have mercy on us in this time of judgment. Shalom. We'll be back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, my live lesson, I was going into this earlier and about people coming out the truth. And this lesson is going to be encourage those who are enduring in the faith, who are enduring in this truth. They're continuing in the works and continuing and being a believer because faith is a work. But again, a beautiful scripture my cousin Torrance sent me, I want to bring out. You know, I read a lot of stuff, but you know, memory can't hold everything. So he usually sent me something that left my memory and I always got to go back to it. So first John two and nineteen, they went out from us, but they are not of us, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is concerning uh the true elect versus the fake elect, the true believers versus the non believers. The people who appear to believe in Yahweh Shai and his testimony versus the people who completely believe on it. Because there's going to be a lot of people coming out of the truth in these last days. <clears throat> and those people that come out of this truth, they are enemies. You don't see it now, but when the pressures of prophecy unfold and everything is on the line, things like food, water, shelter safety stability when your lives on the line you're going to see people's true colors those of us the one third that's part of the true elect we go maintain our integrity with the faith we you have a shy and we're not going to break we're going to sort of be moving on one accord the two thirds going to be all over the place they're going to be turning us in to the government for cash rewards for money they're going to be turning on us for, for food and water, and they're going to come up against us and kill us and cause some of us to be thrown into these FEMA death camps and killed there. But the two-thirds are enemies, and it's going to be known, it's going to be made known when events such as the lights going out, the nationwide blackout, the economic collapse, when your debit cards and money no longer working through Jacob's trouble, but when it's all on the line. We're gonna be known that the two we we're gonna see why the Lord is gonna kill the two thirds. Cause we see why already. They foolish, full of wickedness, drunk off the ways of America. But not only that, they are enemy. They the nation of the Israel, but I believe in Galatians, it says that we're the Israel of the Most High. So we the chosen of the chosen. And because they didn't continue in the faith with us continue being a believer, but they went out of this truth. They went out of the faith. They left the spiritual gathering and they did that, that it might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So the Lord had them leave this truth. They left the spiritual gathering so that the Lord could show us who our real people are. Because you could be related by blood but there's another form of relationship that goes deeper than blood, and that's in the spirit. So some of these people might be your friends and family by blood, but they're not your spiritual family. The Lord is about to cut them away from us. That's why I believe Matthew 14, it says that the Lord will sever the wicked from the just. The Lord is going to cut these people off from the earth. So... Keep your eyes open for people that's coming out of this truth. The Lord is going to put an evil spirit on the people who leave the truth. Just like he put an evil spirit on Saul. 
because Saul was a king and a prophet, and the Lord put an evil spirit on him, and then Saul was always trying to kill David and kill his servants. And then the Lord destroyed them. But let's get into this first scripture. Well, let's get into the next scripture. Proverbs 13 and 13. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. <clears throat> now, this is a distinction from the one third versus the two thirds. The two thirds, going back to the scripture, they would no doubt have continued in the face if they had been with us. So why did they not continue with us in the faith, continue with us as being a believer? Because for one or more reason, they despise the word. And this is the two thirds. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. It's black and white. It ain't no in-betweens. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. We fear the commandment in every word. The one third, the true elect. So our fear is going to lead to us being rewarded. And our fear of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And again, the, the top half of this verse, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. Like we say, it's black or white. It's, you don't have to despise the whole Bible or despise the whole ministry. If it's one little line or one verse you don't agree with, that you don't like, you're going to be destroyed. If it's any part of the process of becoming a believer, uh, to be prepared for Yahweh Shai's coming, any part of that process you don't like, you're going to be destroyed. If it's something you don't agree with, you're going to be destroyed. It don't matter how simple it is. It could be something as simple as, oh, what I like eating catfish. If you see a problem with that, you're going to be destroyed. If you see a problem with salvation on the being for the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, salvation not going to be for you. And we're not talking about the white man and the other nations. We're talking about our own people. Our own people, most of the time, got an issue with despising a word. Or you got some people, you know, they think they can save their whole family. And they get upset, you know, if their husband or wife, if their kids, if their parents, if their brother don't get this truth. Well, if they don't get it, they're going to be destroyed. It don't matter that because you love them so much and you want to save them. You might love that person, but that don't mean the Lord love them. The Lord don't want them. They're going to be destroyed. Same with the people that's coming out of this truth. Because going back to this verse, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. So they continued in this faith for some time. They endured in the truth for some time. But because they didn't endure all the way in the truth to the end, the Lord didn't want them. The Lord doesn't love them. You see anybody that was in this truth, Rather, your light believers or your hardcore teachers, if they leave this truth, the Lord never cared about them. And that's why going down on this verse, it reads that they, that those that went out might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Meaning, we, they not the same as us. The Lord built us different. Or you might have somebody that despise, let's see about it being slavery in the kingdom of heaven, us rooting the other nations. Or you might have somebody that say um, that the Bible is too much. It's just too much to learn or it's harder than Christianity. Well, you have them negative feelings toward the word, you're going to get destroyed. It's as simple as that. Because the one third, we got joy in every word of the Bible, the good and the bad. It's challenging, but it just makes us try harder. That's how we built different. And the two-thirds, they're going to try for a little bit, but then they're going to break. The Lord didn't love them. What we're going through is boot camp. Then at the return of the Lord, hey, we're going to be raised up, graduated, promoted. We men, that's going to be promoted to angels. But the people who can't continue with this boot camp, hey, they're going to fall. And really what it is, because our men is soft these days. 
Anybody that can continue in this truth, speaking to the man, because it began with us. You soft. Plain and simple. Everybody want a, a faggot white Jesus that they can pray and cry to. But, you know, that's not the true God of the Bible. That's not the God of the universe. The Lord is a man of war. He's the manliest man in existence. And there's nothing on earth that you can just be yes around and just walk your way into. You can't just walk across the graduation stage if you ain't take them 120 credits for your bachelor's degree. You can't play in the NBA championship if you ain't play all through high school and college. Same with this truth. You can't just walk into the kingdom of heaven last minute because you decided you wanted to confess the name of the Lord in your bedroom. Nah. But if you despise the word, you actually despise Yahweh Shai. And we're going to get into that. Because again, if you despise the word, you despise Yahweh Shai himself, his only begotten son. So the Lord has only one son. If you despise the word, you despise him. And you're going to be destroyed. And we're going to show why. Is that because Yahweh Shai is the word. And that's why Psalms chapter 40 and 7 then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Yahweh Shai said, I come in the volume of the book. So the words contained in the volume of the book, the Holy Scriptures, is Yahweh Shai himself. This is the Yahweh Shai story. Because existence, the heavens and the earth, it's about Yahweh Shai. It's not about us. You're going to find that out at his return. When everything created stops and bows down and reverence him. And just because the Lord extended his love to us, the hopeful we let, we can take part in his story. He's the author and the main character of his story. And we the side characters, you know, that's going to get glory with the main character. Only if we can if we can endure as he endured. So again, Yahweh Shai said, I come in the volume of the book. That's why we said, if you despise the word. And it don't say words with an S. It's one word. If it's one word you don't like, you're going to be destroyed. Because Yahweh Shai is the volume of the book. It is written of me. Yeah, because like we said, it's a Yahweh Shai story. It's written of him. Every every bit of it. Yeah, it's about saving us, but it's still not about us. It's about Yahweh Shai showing his power that he may be glorified. Everything created is to glorify Yahweh Shai. That's why the scriptures say everything was created for his pleasure. Everything that's going to happen is to show that he's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So if you despise the book, I'm sorry, if you despise any word, that means you despise some part of the book. You despise Yahweh Shai himself because he come in the volume of the book. It is written of him. And then going to Revelation 19 and 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Whose blood you think it was? Not only was it Esau and the other nations, but it's the two-thirds of our people that despise the word. Yahweh Shai going to be covered in their blood. Because it says, I love Jacob, but I hated Esau. People, minds break down that the word hate actually comes out the mouth of the Lord. Because the Lord loved Jacob, but hated Esau. Millions of people going to get destroyed for hating that one word that the Lord said he hated Esau. So that's how serious and volatile this is. One part of it you don't like, you're going to be destroyed, plain and simple. And forget anybody who falls out of the truth, anybody that can't come in the truth. And me, in my experience, since I've been learning and teaching and telling everybody who I talk to on a regular basis, I only got, I can count on, on one hand how many people I know that's in this truth that I can honestly say that's part of the hopeful elect.
So that means everybody else, friends and family, that's not on that list, I already got it made up in my mind and I already know that they're going to die either by the sword or by the nuclear missiles because they're not in this truth, they're not in the faith, or they are in the truth and they're going to fall out of the truth. So I've already already detached myself from them. I already know that out of all the people I know or so-called love, only less than a handful going to actually probably make it out of here. And I'm cool with that. I'm not offended. I'm not upset. I'm not mad at the Lord. I'm not questioning them. Because when Esau come in like a sword, you're going to say to hell with everybody else. I'm trying to save myself. Everybody ain't going to matter then. When the nuclear missile's in the sky, ain't nothing or anybody going to matter. Because when the nuclear missiles come and start burning up the people, and I got to throw this out there, when the missiles come, you people not going to vanish or die, the Lord going to keep y'all alive. Why don't thermonuclear missiles is hitting America? The Lord's going to keep y'all alive. And when you burning in the nuclear fire, you're not going to be thinking about nobody else. All you can be thinking about is, dang, why didn't I listen? Why didn't I try harder? And his name is called the word of God. So the entire Bible, what did Yahweh Shai say? I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Yahweh Shai is the word of God. So the words of the Most High, the words of we got of the God, of God that we reading, is actually Yahweh Shai speaking it. He is the Word made flesh. So if you despise any part of the Word, you despise Yahweh Shai. Then ultimately, you despise Yahweh, who sent Yahweh Shai for us to bring us this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And then it's the Holy Spirit that's spreading this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So if you reject the Holy Spirit, you through. There's no coming back from that in this world or the next. And that's why this next verse here, Proverbs 8 and 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. So the Lord said, if you sin against Yahweh Shai, meaning if you reject him, if you despise any word, you only doing wrong to yourself. You only hurting yourself. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. And your soul is the forever you. So you're not just hurting yourself physically. You wronging your own soul. That means you're going to be cursed, rejected by Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai in this lifetime and in, the next, in the, and in the next lifetime and in the lifetime after that forever. Even going to the kingdom of heaven. It's always going to be known that you was a rejecter of Yahweh Shai. And that curse is going to follow you. So you don't just do your body physical harm in this lifetime. Then you die, reincarnated. You come back and start, you come back and start fresh. No, you wrong of your own soul. That curse, that sin, you could be punished with that for eternity. And throw a lot there, you can still be punished in the kingdom of heaven. Because the one third of the elect, the glory, and just the stuff that we going to have, the two thirds not going to have the same stuff. And as we continue, all that hate me love death. This is King Solomon talking, but if you know how, what the world calls reincarnation, uh, Yahweh Shai is Solomon. Uh, reincarnated pretty much in a regeneration because this was Solomon that wrote this passage here but Solomon is Yahweh Shai and Solomon slash Yahweh Shai said all they that hate me love death how can you hate Yahweh Shai in this lifetime if you're not physically here let's go where we started Proverbs 13 and 13 whoso despises the word shall be destroyed that lines up you hate Yahweh Shai by despising the word, even if it's just one word, one letter. That's how you hate Yahweh Shai in this lifetime. Because 
it's not us that people that people have a problem with is what we teaching the ministry the words it's a hard message it's tough it's not pleasing to the ears so if you despise this ministry meaning you despise the word that means you hate Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book it is written of him and that's why it says whosoever despises the word shall be destroyed that makes sense because all that hate Yahweh Shai love death so if you hate him you love death man Solomon was hard can't nobody say a harder statement and that's the two-thirds because again it's not us it's the message we, it's, it's the message we bring and they it's, it's one part of the message they don't like either that everybody can't get into heaven or you can't just ask for forgiveness at the at the last minute or you some of your family can't get in it and we tell them well if your family can't get in it they're gonna be destroyed same with me the message don't change because I'm the one that's pushing the message. If it's parts of my family, well, we're not going to say if. I know most of my family going to be destroyed for not coming into this truth. It's all right, though. Same with my friends. That's what it is. The message don't change because I'm pushing it. The same message that we push to everybody else, we already had to accept it and digest it in our spirits. Now it's part of us. Nah, that's why we warn the people. We don't want everybody to be destroyed, but I can tell you the house is on fire, but I can't make you leave the house. In America is that house. And this is also concerning the one third, Luke 7 and 23. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Because the one third, we're not going to be offended in the Lord or the ministry, or not be even offended by one word he spoke. We're going to take the constructive criticism, or we're going to try to build ourselves up by it, building ourselves up by the word, because he come in the volume of the book, it is written in the film. So we're going to try to build ourselves up with Yahweh Shai, with his word. But the two-thirds, they're going to be offended, and they're going to be cursed in this lifetime and in the next. That's why it says, blessed is he. We're not going to just be blessed in this lifetime, in the lifetime to come, and after that, and after that and forever. we always going to be blessed because he wasn't offended in the Lord. Because he wasn't offended in the Lord, we built ourselves up in the spiritually and got our minds right for his return to Lord willing be part of the true elect. While the two-thirds, they got offended, BS'd, and was rejected by the Lord. But we need to continue in this faith. We too late in the game to start questioning parts of the ministry, to be questioning anything. And Elder Apostle Tahar was sending to the elders of GMS back then. What else you gonna do? Are you gonna go work the same job and get discriminated against and pay taxes? Like what else you gonna do? If you in this truth, stay in the truth. We too close to the end for people to start breaking. So we're going to leave off with this verse again. 1 John 2 and 19. They went out from us, meaning we bought them in the truth. But they are not of us. They're not part of the elect like we are. For if they had been part of the elect like us, they would have no doubt continued in the faith with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest. They were not all of us. So the Lord is causing this spiritual separation. He's separating the real from the fakes. The two-thirds are the fakes, and it's going to be made known. But that's it for the lesson here. Until next time, Shalom.